Hey, sixth grade, it's Friday, and guess what we get to do today? We get to write, and I can't wait to see what you can do. But I want to explain what you're writing real quick. So the past three days, we have gone over the poem of Robert Frost, Road Not Taken, and now you're going to explain how imagery, setting, and point of view, it doesn't matter the order that you use, give meaning to the poem. So what does give meaning mean? Well, give meaning means how does it give a deeper emotional pull? How does it um, describe deeper into what was going on at the time? So let's read the poem or the writing prompt together. How does Frost use literary elements such as imagery, point of view, and setting to create meaning. Your answer should just be around 100 words. It doesn't have to be more, and it, it can be a little less, but if you were to give 70 words, that's not close enough. So we're going to round it up at least 90 to 100, okay? And you must use quotation marks, which means you must cite. So you have to go back and look in the poem and use specific examples to support your ideas. You also must use the race strategy. Use the T-charts you have already made to help you brainstorm. So those charts you've been making all week, you've actually been getting ready to write. That's why it said writing prompt. So those were those three. Um, and let me show you what they looked like. Here we go. So the first day on Tuesday, you talked about different phrases and you can use these same phrases. You can talk about one less traveled by, how that gave meaning to the poem, was grassy and wanted where, or you could pick your own. Now, some of you said woods were just trees, but you need to give a deeper meaning that wood means something else inside the poem. Wood actually means um, it could be his future choices that he'll have to make along the way, as in stanza three, way leads to way. Um, yellow could be the season in his life. It could have been later on because yellow would describe a later season in the year. Okay, so go down and then point of view. How does point of view, how does first person point of view give meaning to the poem? Well, if you were able to tell your own story, how would it be different than me telling your story? That's what I'm talking about. And then Thursday, you wrote down different um, setting places. So make, make sure and go back to the poem and use these to help you. But what I'm looking for is to make sure that your organizer or your writing prompt is very organized. And so you have to first start with a thesis. Remember, um, you could start out and you can use mine. It's okay. Robert Frost uses setting, imagery, and point of view to give a deeper meaning to his poem. That could be your thesis, but you would have to go in that order of the three that I listed. Okay, setting, imagery, and point of view. And then you would give an example for each through your sentences. Make sure you have complete sentences. And on the Google Classroom, I have a rubric for you to look at. So before it, some of you start writing so quickly that you don't look at the rubric and you don't see what you need, brainstorm first. Think it through. How do you want to organize this so that Mrs. Sanders, when she, the reader reads it, can completely understand what you've said? has to just be in 100 words. So guys, good luck today. If you need help, I am around. So please call me, email me, and I will help you. For those who have reached out, good job. And uh, hopefully we've helped you through the process. All right. You guys have a great day and have an awesome, beautiful weekend. Bye.